<laughs> wow. Greetings, one and all. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Today is our Tesla Up in Smoke edition. We also take a look at a conversation that I want to call the 1,000 mile semi, uh, semi, which I, you know, I think is kind of an interesting uh, sort of look at things uh, relative to where things are going with the semi truck. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. If you're new, we're glad to have you aboard. Please note that your like and your comments have a big influence uh, on how the channel grows and is maintained. And by watching a couple of uh, 10 seconds of our ads, um, it, it'd be greatly appreciated because it definitely influences uh, our funding and ability to get the job done. Um, uh, thank you, thank you. I, I'm seeing all of your comments there and really appreciate them. And uh, we are preparing hurricane time and it's raining like crazy here in the Washington DC area. At the end, I'll show you where I'm at in Arlington, Virginia. It's really beautiful. And there's some dedicated soccer folks doing their thing out here. So it's kind of crazy. I um, was headed to church and I thought I'd say hello. So this show is sort of our up in smoke edition as I shared with you. Uh, the reason for that is as you know, um, we've had a, an interesting situation going on with Elon Musk. So I wanted to highlight the fact that um, I call this the Up in Smoke uh, show because what all of you guys don't know about is that there's a problem with Elon Musk. And the problem with Elon Musk is that the man is absolutely brilliant. He acts, he's a visionary. He's a hard worker. But as you can see from the smoking and alcohol, um, you know, he's he's uh, he's not really managing things the way you know traditional executives would manage things, and Tesla's uh, board and others are trying to figure out ways to sort of modify how things are done to address what's going on. Uh, basically, uh, Jerome Guillen, who had previously run the Model S, then took over trucks, has now been put in charge of all of automotive operations. So um, what exactly does this mean? In theory, Jerome Guillen would be running the company and Elon Musk is now free to focus on special projects, etc. I think this is a good idea on the part of the board. Uh, the only problem is because Elon Musk owns 20% of the company, um, it ain't going to work. But we can all be you know, think positive about it, but there's no way in the heck it's going to work because, uh, you know, Elon Musk considered considers there to be a permanent attachment between him and Tesla. So he'd rather die than give up control of Tesla, but at least it shows the board is doing something. The other alarm that was raised this week is the number of executives that have quit. And the question is, will that influence Tesla's ability to get the job done? Excellent question. Um, please note that because of how important the work Tesla is that they're doing, uh, Tesla loses about 20% of its management staff every year. Those are either replaced by internal people um, moving up or external hires coming in. But uh, the fact that the stock is doing well, there's some nice stock options available, means even though Elon is a little crazy sometimes, he has no problem attracting talent uh, that might otherwise be at the best firms. So um, I just wanted to uh, note that uh, um, the the challenge right now, it, it wasn't the last CFO that lasted one, one month, it was the last chief accounting officer that lasted for one month. He came over from um, uh, Seagate, I believe, one of the big drive manufacturers. The thing about it is that there's certain executives when they walk into chaos, they recognize they can go to jail if they screw up. So it's better for them to quit rather than being in an organization that's a little bit chaotic, which is what Tesla is currently. So this is a long-winded statement to say that 
Um, you know, the problem going on right now is that I, I think I sort of told you guys to expect crazy things to happen. The main reason why we're expecting crazy things to happen is everything is working well. So therefore, Elon is has gotten so comfortable that with everything going well, that he's getting bored and therefore he's looking for ways to entertain himself. And that's what we're starting to see in terms of the buyout stuff. That's what we're seeing in terms of the smoking and drinking for those interviews. Um, I So the other thing that's going on is that well-heeled investors, as I shared with you, don't like uncertainty. So feel free to expect more craziness uh, from Elon, particularly if they blow away the number and have plenty of cash around for him to experiment with new products. Uh, just expect, I want to say more crazy because he's not focused on solving a big problem that's entertaining. So therefore he has to find uh, sort of interesting things to occupy his time with. And the five other businesses he's, he's running uh, don't seem to be enough of a workload for him in terms of using up all of his energy. So therefore we see what's going on. Um, so at any rate, I, my assessment of things and confirmed by the special 400 deliveries this weekend event going on at the Tesla factory, combined with the fact that we're now starting to see right-hand drive cars uh, being produced and, and getting ready. There's a large number of sort of little details that highlight the fact that Tesla is on a run to very high numbers of Model 3s produced and delivered but there are definitely some bottlenecks in terms of service of current vehicles of all types, parts, et cetera, getting to them and other details of this sort. So bottom line is that uh, it's been a crazy week in news from Tesla. Um, the issue in my mind is not, um, you know, we'll get past this and people will forget about it. The issue is to recognize that this is a fairly unprofessional management team and the type of mistakes they're making, uh, you know, in terms of what's going on, and particularly Elon Musk, uh, I think is going to continue happening because, um, you know, it's it's sort of a family operation almost with a CEO. I don't think the management changes that the board has done will have any impact whatsoever because uh, Elon, you know, controls too much of the stock for that to be actually an issue. The next thing I wanted to cover that I think is kind of fascinating is what I call the, um, uh, that's true, the, you know, uh, the factory solar roof, you know, there's a lot of new things that are occurring, but they're somewhat routine and don't really require heavy duty brain power. And Elon Musk enjoys uh, heavy brain power activities, but nothing that um, is mundane or boring or too easy. The next thing I wanted to dive into is something I call the 1,000 mile semi. Now, why, how, you know, what's going on with this? The only fly in the ointment of the, the, uh, the new semi that nobody's discussing or everybody's discussing, but nobody's figured it could be solved is if you take a 80,000 pound truck, fill it with diesel fuel, the, the top end of their range can be between 900 and 1,100 miles. So the argument against doing a Tesla is, you know, you guys can't go that far. Therefore, we're not, you know, one reason why you can't purchase this vehicle. The one problem with this assessment is the fact that money rules the game. So what do I mean by this? The fact of the matter is when you put that, that fuel in a truck, it weighs a certain amount. So it reduces the load that you can carry. So... There are actually well-heeled customers that um, have resources and they can do custom battery supply that does eat up weight for their semi that allows them to get more range. So bottom line is that thousand miles is not out of the question. The other thing is this, if that thousand miles for a truck is simply the matter of an extra half hour of time for charging stations without modifying the truck. What's interesting about this is that um, the, the, when you look at the raw numbers, if you're getting uh, 20 miles a gallon 
over a thousand miles versus six miles a gallon on average or over a thousand miles. The value proposition of doing it with electric ex easily exceeds the time consumed of driver time in the charging process. So the bottom line is that this is a thousand mile truck possibility. If you stick some batteries in a rear cab or you put a special tower right behind uh, the main uh, part of the truck, a thousand miles is a no brainer and it's not a big deal. Uh, so yes, Jerry, I agree with you. You know, the drivers have to stop anyway, but what we're starting to play around with is if you put a sleeper cab in, you now have the ability to switch drivers, let the other driver either sleep or eat or whatever they're gonna do and keep going. And so it's the market that supposedly is untouchable by Tesla at this point. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that there are some people that have a great deal of money, number one, and number two, the operations they're doing are majorly impacted and they can easily write off the additional cost of the truck for the modifications it takes to get this extra range. So this actually shows in, in essence why Daimler-Benz and others, Daimler from what I can see is losing one to $200 million a year, developing prototypes to allow them to offer their customers, um, um, that's true. Um, the Daimler-Benz in particular has a 40% market share. So for them losing $100, $200 million a year and doing so for multiple years, screwing around with electric trucks at one to 200 miles is not a big deal. And basically that's what I think is going on right now. I felt like there's a whole show on Daimler-Benz that I need to dive into, which is, um, you know, you guys have billions of dollars to work with and what are you doing? And so why I say this is that for me, the sign that Daimler-Benz is deadly serious is when they switch their electric trucks to middle drive and therefore come up with a bullet shaped nose on their trucks, similar to what Tesla has. Until then, I'm still thinking that these guys are playing around because just the body shape change of the front of the truck uh, results in a 10% reduction in fuel consumption based on the aerodynamics that can be changed up on the vehicle. So come on, Daimler, we need you guys to, you know, get serious here and put something on the road that is, uh, you know, it shows you're legit. And by the way, I, I have to admit, when I first sort of got into looking at the Daimler electric truck, I was really impressed because if you look at their trucks, they have a special set of neon lights on the front of the truck that um, look really cool. And I felt like maybe the neon lights on the front of the truck were associated with something really special about electric, but literally they had taken their old truck designs and just put some neon lights on the front so they could distinguish, help consumers distinguish between the two types of trucks. But otherwise the vehicle's look was identical they're saving a lot of money by making no effort to redesign sort of the aero touch of, of the truck. But um, I, I just think it's uh, a cruel hoax, a cruel joke, very disappointing for a company with as much money as they have and as much market share that they're trying to pr protect as Tesla comes out. Uh, just a couple of, uh, you know, the the, well, excellent question, Jerry, regarding the vehicle weight uh, for a thousand mile truck. Uh, the answer is um, the additional packs needed for a thousand miles are probably about 1500 pounds a piece. So if you want the extra, um, uh, if you want the extra range, you're giving up uh, freight that you can carry. But again, this game is all about if you have enough money you can have things modified or done custom to get where you need to go. And there are plenty of great engineers around to help sort of cobble together whatever you'd like. Um, the, the next thing I wanted to cover is the fact that there's a whole discussion by some of my viewers regarding the fact that, hey, we haven't seen the trucks in mass production yet. So therefore Tesla won't be able to pull this off when they're ready. I guess you could argue this, um, you know, 
Um, the bottom line is that uh, underestimating Tesla's ability to figure out how to put a, um, an external shell on top of one of their, you know, a set of three batteries, I think that's misguided. I mean, they don't have to do a back seat, no rear doors, no gull wing doors, all the things they don't have to do. Come on, folks, let's get real. This is a, you know, Tesla being able to produce trucks once there's enough batteries coming from the Giga factory is a no brainer. The only hope some of the large companies have that rely on those sales currently is that um, the battery production ramp is slow enough to slow Tesla's onslaught on the long range industry. Because right now, if you if you had one, two, three hundred thousand trucks a year from Tesla available, that before you get into parts, before you get into turnaround time for them to pay off, um, you know. I think this is a, a no-brainer, so let's get real on this. Let's also say to VW and Cummins and um, and Benz, et cetera, and even BYD, come on, folks. Let's reverse engineer this truck to the extent you can. Let's get a lot of these trucks out there so we can save the planet and enjoy just a more pleasant all-around experience when we're on the road. Um, to some extent, this is what I want to call my potential hurricane edition. As you know, it's raining like crazy in Washington, D.C. as a result of Gordon coming through. The rain showers are coming through from that. Um, Roger, excellent question about production of the semi in the Chinese factory. Um, I really don't. Well, what basically is happening right now is Tesla has a problem. The problem is that. 75% of the patents are open. And the issue that's coming up is that 75% um, of the patents are open. Tesla has elected to expand the Gigafactory production plan from simply producing um, uh, 35 gigawatt hours was the initial. They've now decided to increase the gigawatt hour plan for the main plant from 35 hours to 105 hours. And so Tesla has discussed building gigawatt cap or wattage capability for batteries in China. But the reason why they're concentrating battery supplies is all the technical talent is right there, number one. And number two, a lot of the machinery, et cetera, that hasn't been patented is sitting in that facility. So where the real value is for Tesla in terms of what it doesn't want into the marketplace is the equipment it takes to put together the highest energy density battery in the world. And those processes and machines are where the real value is because if they're replicated, uh, that's when Tesla drops into serious trouble. So I don't believe they can allow these out. Now, can they allow things like an automated plant that puts together previously produced batteries that allow them to put together packs? Yes. So there's a lot of things that they could ship out in the form of a semi-gigafactory, which is what I think is going to happen in China. Will they produce trucks in China? Well, there'll be trucks on the road in China for sure, but there's a difference between producing and assembling. And, um, you know, I think the core of the battery pack and um, thermal management system will come from California or, or from Nevada permanently, but everything else is subject to being sort of purchased and put together on site, especially because China has so many capabilities uh, of what it can do. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, uh, we're sort of nearing the end of our time and I wanted to review the fact that don't forget to pick up extra supplies with the hurricane sweeping through your potential area, it could be bad news. Uh, don't forget, I'm gonna do my 20 leg lifts right now so I don't forget to do it today. Um, hello, uh, Norman. Thanks for visiting, Jerry. Uh, I see my friend from England visiting us as well. Much appreciated for you guys uh, coming out, especially on our Up in Smoke tour. I was debating, and maybe you guys could uh, put a note here. Should we call this show No Seeds or the Up in Smoke Show? Because uh, clearly Elon Musk has enough money to get marijuana with no seeds in it and therefore creating problems. It could also be the up in smoke show based on him choosing uh, to, to do the smoking that he's doing, uh, which I believe in California now is recreationally legal. So uh, bottom line is that um, everything is running great at Tesla. 
Uh, I think that um, this is very good news for the company, but it's bad news for bad behavior from Elon because, uh, you know, the bottom line is that um, the more, the less work he has to do on interesting projects, he gets bored and he tries to find things to do or disruptions to create, uh, you know, sort of for entertainment value, but it has nothing to do with, I think the company is running great, production's going great, et cetera. And I think all that should be noted. Um, at any rate, um, my thousand mile truck is definitely out there to be had. So if you're a big company and you don't like that 500 range, hey, custom can result in you having as long a range or as short a range as you'd like. Because there are a lot of people that are going to use 250 miles and don't need a thousand miles. And, and uh, that, uh, you know, would be uh, useful to some. At any rate, um, I um, definitely appreciate all of you sharing some time here on Sunday with us. Um, we actually really look forward to any and all input that you might have. Um, you know, that, that's a very good point. Um, by the way, you just pointed out that uh, it only needs one dollar of electricity to go 50 miles. That's one dollar in reasonably priced places in the U.S. One of our viewers pointed out that um, European electricity, just like European gas, could actually be fairly high cost. But I still think it's cheaper to drive electric. And as they're banning those vehicles inner city, I think it's affecting that as well. So at any rate, uh, Jerry and others want to thank all of you guys for your support on Patreon as well as your support on our show uh, on a regular basis. Um, we'd love to have topics that you'd like us to cover um, listed. Uh, I actually didn't think we'd have enough material to do two or three shows a week, but uh, there keeps being other things happening. The stock price is kind of low right now. So as we head into earnings, I want to encourage those that are, that are big fans of Tesla to pick up some stock. I think naturally it's going to get back into the 340, 350 range after they see how many Model 3s are being produced and sold. So this might be an opportunity to pick up some shares and make some money based on the up and smoke process. Um, just a reminder, uh, 30 SPF for better only. Um, don't inhale. I like that, Roger. Um, uh, don't forget, 30 SPF or better only uh, because... You know, that's what you need to, to prevent skin cancer. Try the 5-2 or the paleo diet. Interesting ideas. A lot of folks are talking about plant-based. Trying to head there, but I still need some meat once in a while. Um, again, look forward to our next conversation. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, mach's gut, au revoir, le hitraut, choda hafez, farvel, and have a great day, and look forward to our next conversation.